When you were laying in your bed, you seen the house that God provided for you. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. We've got to give God the praise when it's necessary. Right. Not just give him the praise when he bless us when we want him to bless us. Come on, somebody. All right. we got to bless God at all times. Yeah. Give God the praise at all times. Not just when we need a blessing from God. Amen? Right. Amen. We, we, we know what the day is. Today is Easter Sunday. Amen? Uh, but it's a shame that this is one of the busiest days of the year for the church. Amen? Because we get a lot of people that come to church on Easter Sunday. And that's the only time out of the year that they come to church. That's right. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Uh, it, it's become, so to speak, like a fashion show. All right. All right. Amen. We, we want to come and show out what we have. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we spend a lot of money on uh, hairdos. Come on, somebody. Right. Uh, we then we go get haircuts oh. for Easter Sunday. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. But it's time we get it right on what this day is all about. And it's not about a fashion show. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because some churches are just packed to capacity on Easter Sunday. Come on, somebody. When it should be packed every Sunday. Amen. We, we, we all know the story of of Jesus being crucified. Amen? All right. All right. We all know the story about him being nailed to the cross. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. But this is not the only time that we should just come to church is on Easter Sunday. That's right. Amen? Because of God being crucified. Amen. I, I wanted to go in a different direction today because we hear so many sermons about uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for having me to be able to bring this message today. Amen. Uh, this is my first message as far as bringing uh, the resurrection sermon, amen? All right. And I, I did have a, a problem with it at the beginning, but as I got to thinking about it, uh, God had me here for a reason, amen? All right. All right. Amen, because I look at a lot of things that way. You know, we try to thank for God, but we can't thank for God. Amen, because we're living on God's time and not our own time. All right. We can't predict about what tomorrow brings. Amen, as the song says. Amen, but God knows what tomorrow brings. Amen, Amen. Amen. but we're supposed to be in a position where we're getting ready for tomorrow. Amen. Amen, All right. Amen. And, and the word is described and, and designed that way. So we can be prepared for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to get off the subject of, of the resurrection, but like I said, I'm trying to go in a different way. Amen. Because that was a significance for this crucifixion and the resurrection. Amen. Amen. And we must define what that significance and that definition is of the resurrection. Amen. And I'm going to try to go and use some things that Paul illustrated about God's resurrection. Amen? All right. All right. Amen. Because he had some good uh, areas that he came about with about God's resurrection. Mm -hmm. And we tend not to, some of us, look at God's resurrection until Easter Sunday. But we got to look at his resurrection on a daily basis. All right. And I'm saying that for a reason because he died. That's right. 
for our sins. All right. He died to make things better for us. And he designed his words to help us on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. And if we just humble ourselves enough and really truly get in God's word, it will help us on a daily basis. And we won't have to worry about what tomorrow brings. Amen? Because we will have enough faith and trust in God and believe in him that he will take care of tomorrow. Amen? Amen. I want to direct you to the book of uh, Philippians, uh, the third chapter. We all know that the subject today should be about the resurrection of God. Amen. But if I can, I want to have a subject today also to go with that. Amen? And one of my subjects is that it's in the Spirit of God. It's in the Spirit of God. And then let us just thank God for the cross. And thank God for his resurrection. Amen? I want to start at Philippians 3. And 2. And it reads, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Because of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision. We worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of, of the Hebrews concerning the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuted in the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. And let us go to the seventh verse. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss of Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the ex excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, from whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own right is which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings may conform to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. We thank God for being here today. Amen. You know, I want to just illustrate some things that uh, Paul talked about uh, as far as the resurrection. And Paul went in a direction where he was letting the readers know and let us know that we not to look to God as, as, as being dead and just being resurrected. Amen? Because of him dying for our sins. Amen? And the significance of him dying and, and rising on the third 
third day when he arose. Amen. When God, when Jesus rose on the third day, the scripture tells us that he had all power in his hand. Amen. 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 Just because Jesus left us here, it does not mean that he left us without any power of ourselves. Amen. We got to understand when when Jesus left here, amen, he went back to his father, amen. And the significance of him leaving here, we got to realize that Jesus was in the flesh. Amen. He was in the flesh just like you and I. So, if he was in the flesh just like you and I, he was subject to sin also. Amen? Amen? So he had to be resurrected and reborn again, so to speak. And I want you to know today that we all have to be born again. Amen? We have to be renewed in ourselves. Amen? And this is the same thing that Jesus had to do. Amen. I, I heard Evangelist Chambers say one time that the old man has to die. Right. In order for the new man to be resurrected. Amen. Because we all, when we're being saved in God, we've got to die, so to speak. Come on, somebody. Right. That's the only way the new man can come about in us. Come on, somebody. That we got to be resurrected just like Jesus. Because we got to let the new things in us come about. Because if we can't let the new things come out until we get through with the old man. Amen? Amen. And in all of us, the reason I said it's in the spirit of God. In all of us to get anything from God. We've got to be in the spirit of God. Come on, somebody. Because Jesus, if he was down here, he couldn't do anything while he was on this earth if he wasn't in the spirit of his Father. Come on, somebody. That's the way he was able to heal the sick. Because he was in the spirit of God. He told everybody throughout his journey here on earth, if you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father. And he also told us that I and my Father are one. Come on, somebody. So we can't do nothing here on earth unless we are in the Spirit of God. And this is the reason why things are not just working for some of us today. Because we are not in the Spirit of God. The Bible tells us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. It's time that we get ourselves right in the church today. Because there's just too much complaining going on in the church. And on the outside of the church. Because we're just not worshiping God in the right way. Amen. We, we got to be like they were in the Bible days. We're looking for this and we're looking for that. We're looking for this blessing. We're looking for that. But I want you to understand that we're not going to be able to see every miracle that comes about. Come on, somebody. But we got to get right within ourselves. Because when God left you, when Jesus left you, he left a little authority in our hands. When we're looking for a blessing or looking for somebody else to bless somebody, we got to realize that you and I has to bless somebody. Amen? God reaches down from heaven to bless us so we can reach out to one another. Amen? It's time we get uh, right in God today. We got to understand the significance of the resurrection because he died for a reason. He died for our sins that we didn't have to suffer anymore. But he had a lot of parables for his disciples. And these parables 
uh, well, for us to understand different things that he was doing, amen? But we got to be able to have faith in God because if we don't be in a position that we can step out on faith, how are we going to have what we need from God? Come on, somebody. Because the, the disciples, when they went out to heal the sick and the lame, some of them didn't have enough faith to do what they had to do. And Jesus it stated in the scripture that he was just standing by to wait and see what they were going to do when he sent them out on their own to go and heal the sick and pray for people. Come on, somebody. Because some of them didn't have the faith that they need. So we got to start having the faith in God that we need to have. Because a lot of us say that we have faith, but when, we, when the time comes for us to step out on the faith, we don't step out on the faith. We start losing trust in God. And we start trying to implement things in our lives to substitute for God. But that's the time that we got to step out on that faith. I want you to understand the significance of the resurrection. Amen? Because he taught the disciples. You know, we are God's disciples now. Come on, somebody. We're supposed to be doing things that he can't do that he's here on earth. We got to understand the significance because we're waiting on God too much today. We're waiting on God as if he was just going to come down and do what we're asking him for. Come on, somebody. He's working through you and I. You know, because it's not good when somebody in our own family needs help. And we can't even help our own family members. That's a sad thing. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because strangers today sometimes help some of us before our own family would help us. Come on, somebody. Because we're not doing the things that we need to do with God. Because he left power and authority in our own hands. All right. Come on, somebody. Because you know where you have started from. A lot of us have been blessed today. A lot of us have been through some trials and some tribulations. And right now, we're still going through some trials and tribulations. Amen. But I want you to know that you got to go through your trials and your tribulations. Amen. Jesus while he was here in the flesh. He went through some trials and tribulations. Come on, somebody. Amen. Although he was the son of God, he still had some problems that he had to face. It wasn't like that he got up every morning and everything was all right for him. All right. Come on, somebody. So what makes us think that we don't have to go through some things. We got to go through some things in order for a change to come about in us. But see, a lot of us don't want to go through a change. We just want God to just be right here, right now, when we want it. Come on, somebody. We got to understand the significance of the resurrection of God. Because he had to go through what he had to go through in order for a change to come about in us. Right. But we got to understand we got to go through something. If you don't go through something, how are you going to know how to come out of something? All right. Because we're not paying attention to our circumstances. That's the reason why we go through the same thing day after day month after month and year after year right. because we're not looking to God with our spiritual eyes. We're not looking to God with our spiritual ears. When God is trying to speak to us, we're so clouded with, with judgment 
that we're not seeing when God is speaking to us. We're not hearing when God is speaking to us. Come on, somebody. Because a lot of times God will send blessings into our lives. But we're not in the right place with God. So we are blocking some of our own blessings. We got to get it right in God today. Because God is in the blessing business. But we got to understand when we are with our own walk with God. There's some things we got to eliminate out of our lives. And that's the problem with some of us. We don't want to get rid of some things. We want to keep our blessings with God and keep the other things on the side. But we don't realize that these things are blocking us from our blessings. We're trying to hold people in our lives that we know that don't belong. But we pray to God to be able to change that person in our life. But after a while, when you're praying to God, and if God is not doing anything, that'll let you know something. You got to get rid of that somebody that is in your life that is no good to you. That's why your blessing can't get through, because you're keeping that person in your life. We got to be able to hear God with our spiritual ears. Right. And we got to be able to, to see God and see things that God is setting before us. Right. Because we are missing out on too many of our blessings. We got to get it right in the church today. Yes. There's just too much complaining going on. Right. Because when God died on the cross, and he got up the third day in a rose. Uh, we should not be going through any kind of problems. Because God has set forth and looked ahead of every problem and situation that we're going through. Uh, but if we're not in a position to hear from God, we're going to miss out on our blessings. I'm just tired of so many people uh, blaming their pastors and Blaming their teachers and blaming people in their lives when God is sending you word to make a change in your life. But like I said, we don't want to get rid of some things. But we got to get rid of some things in order to see something from God. Because God wants to know if he can trust you with his blessings. Because he is not going to bless you if you're not right in him. He is. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. All right, man. God is good. Yes, he is. But we got to be able where we can hear from him. Amen. Right. Come on, somebody. Right, we got to be able to see when God sends us a blessing. All right. Come on, somebody. Right. It's time to stop all the complaining. And it's time to start praying to God yeah. in the spirit of God. Yeah. Because some of us are not praying to God in the right way. Right. Sometimes we got to get all to ourselves. Yes, Lord. The Bible says sometimes we got to separate ourselves. Right. Come on, somebody. You can't pray when you got a lot of confusion in your life. You can't be praying to God to groom some things. When you keep it the things that you're praying for in your life. All right. Come on, somebody. Right. We know what we are doing wrong, but we think God is going to just bless us in and out. Which God does give us some grace and some mercy. All right. But after a while, you got to give up some things. Because God is not going to continue to just keep blessing us. We got to show God. That we have faith in Him. We got to show God that we have trust in Him. Right. We got to show God that we want a change in our lives and be real about it. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about today. We got to be real about ourselves. Right. Come on, somebody, because some of us are just too holier than thou. Hmm. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. Some of us. When God starts blessing us, 
We just think we're so much better than somebody else. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. But I want you to know the reason why he blesses some of us. So we can reach out and help somebody else. Yes, but some of us get in the position that we're so blessed, we just so much better than everybody else. And we start to look down on everybody. And we look at them and we say that I got mine and you get yours. But God has blessed you yes, sir. in order to reach out and help somebody else. Yes, sir. Come on somebody. Yes, sir. But you don't realize that God just as quick as he blessed you. Yes. He can reach out and take it away. Yes. Come on somebody. Yes. But sometimes you know God got to do that to us. In order to get our attention. Right. Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. We got to be right in God today. And stop thinking that we're so much better than one another. Amen. Because you ain't always been in the position that you're in right now. Yes, All of us had to go through some struggles in God. Yeah. Come on, somebody. We got to realize what God has brought us from. Amen. I think about sometimes I know that I be weary in the spirit. But I know God, he reaches out and he helps me when I need it. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. We got to understand when we ask God for some strength, we ain't talking about the physical strength. Sometimes we just be so down and weary in our spirit. And we call out to God. Yes, sir. But I want to let you know something. When you're in the spirit of God and you've got the Holy Spirit in your life, God will make you shine sometimes. Amen? Because sometimes we can't see when the Holy Spirit it is upon us. But a lot of people that, eat, that, that are in the spirit of God, they can see some things on you. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. We need the spirit of God working and operating in our lives. Amen. Because this is what we need from God. Yes. Amen. Because God will make you shine on your job when you need it. Amen. He'll give you some favor on your job when you need it. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You got to understand what I'm talking about. But if you're in the spirit of God, you know what I'm talking about. Right. Because he'll start to operate in your life. Yes, sir. And he'll give you that favor that you need on that job. Yes, sir. He'll start to, to make you rise above everybody else. Right. He'll make you get that promotion that you've been seeking him for. Yes, but you got to be in the spirit of God. I want y'all to understand what I'm saying. Because you can't get nothing done with God unless you in the Spirit of God. Amen. Unless the Holy Spirit abide in you. Yes, the Scripture tells us that if you're in the Spirit of God, then I abide in you. Right. But you got to abide in me for me to be able to abide in you. Right. Come on, somebody. We got to think about these things when we're asking God for something. Yes, sir. Because if we're not in the spirit of God, in the right way, then he's not going to bless us. Right. Sometimes we got to go to our secret place yes, and call on God and pray to him in the spirit. Because we can't pray to God when we got some confusion in our families. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. But we got to get it right if we want God to bless us. But if we can't get it right in the family, we can't get it right in the church. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible tells us that a man can't leave in the church if, if his family and his household is right. Come on, somebody. We got to get ourselves right in God. This is the significance of God's resurrection. Because he wants us to see the things that he was teaching us. All of the things that he taught 
his disciples, we're supposed to be going through the same thing. Come on, somebody. We got to realize that we have a lot of power and authority in our hands. But it's not going to work if we're not in the spirit of God. That's what I'm trying to tell you today. If you want a blessing from God, you got to be in the spirit of God. Because this is not a thing that you can just play with. Because some of us want a blessing today and tomorrow. We didn't forget about God. So we go on by our daily lives. But soon as another problem arrives, we call it on God again for another blessing. But God that gave you a blessing, and you're supposed to be able to take that blessing and make it work for you. And start, instead of uh, a substitute things in our lives until God blesses us. God gives us enough and he takes care of our needs, enough for us to get by until he blesses us. Come on, somebody. Right. Amen. We got to get right in God. We can't substitute things of God. Amen. We got to wait on him until he comes. Yes. Amen? Right. Amen. And this is why we got up on the third day. But we got to realize the significance of it. Amen? All right. But he's not going to trust us until we get right. And get the Holy Spirit in us. And a lot of us say that we're saved and sanctified and that we feel with the Spirit of God, but some of us are not. I just got to say it because we come to church, some of us, and we don't feel nothing from God. All right. We can't even get up and give a testimony. We can't even open our mouths and say, thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for my job. <coughs> thank you for, for, for providing for me and my family. All right. Come on, somebody. All right. It's time that we get right with God and really, truly get in the spirit of God. Because I, I don't know why he keeps just putting it on your past about the, the being in the spirit. You know, that, that's very important, the being in the spirit, because, you know, a spiritual person can see if you're not right with God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We fool a lot of people. But a spiritual person, you can't prove. And see, that's, that's just too much of that going on today in the church. Yeah, you, you know, we're being led. We're being led by the wrong spirit. All right. Come on, somebody. Because a bad spirit can be in the church also. Amen. Come on, somebody. But you know one thing though, that spirit cannot come in this church unless you bring it in yourself. Come on, somebody. That's the only way he has to be invited in the church. That spirit has to be invited in the church. And he walks in with you and I. Come on, somebody. I'm not just saying some of you, I'm talking about you can come in with me. Amen? But we got to be right with God where that spirit can't come in. All right. I don't know why God put putting that on me, but we got to get that right. Amen. Amen, because if that bad spirit get in the church, I heard Minister Cooper say that that spirit can jump on on me. We got to get it right in the church and get right with God and do 
what we're supposed to do in God. Because we just not, a lot of us, I'm not pointing anybody out, but a lot of us are not doing what we're supposed to do in God. But just think if we get right with God, if we really start doing everything that we're supposed to be doing as Christians, how far we could go and how much God will bless us because we are of one accord. We got to be in unity with God. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank God for his word. And I hope that his word, when I know that it will go forth. Because man can't stop God's word. You and I can't stop his word because his word will go forth. But I hope I said something that set in somebody's spirit today to understand the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Because you and I have to go through the same thing in order to, to get right with God. We've got to be reborn again. 